On the porting part of this project, I'm going to be using flex hones with a cordless drill, carbide burrs, a port and polish roll kit from Jags, WD-40 to keep the burrs cool, and my Chicago electric die grinder. Now, I'm not really that new at porting aluminum parts. In the past, I ported some single overhead cam VW heads and intakes and had some pretty good results. I'll also note that if you're going to be porting parts like these, do not use a single speed electric die grinder such as this one. I'm sure it's good at a few things, but not porting. I only picked it up because it was cheap and recommended by a friend, but past experience will tell you that in order to get good clean porting and polishing techniques, you'll need to use a pneumatic tool with a progressive trigger or an electric tool with controllable speed settings. This way it's easier to control how fast or deep the tool is cutting or polishing. This tool spins at like 28k and literally it makes sanding rolls explode so I don't recommend using it. Since this is an experiment with a manifold only, perfection wasn't the goal and I didn't mind if things were a bit out of square. So to smooth out the ports after opening them up a bit with the burrs, I used 80 grit, 120 grit and a final sand of 180 grit. The flex homes come into play only due to the fact that I didn't have long enough arbors to reach deep into the port with regular sanding rolls. The flex hones were only used to help smooth away some of the rough textures and casting lines of the runners. The hones I used were 120 grit and 180 grit. You can see some damage to the runner wall in the last port where I couldn't control the speed of the tool. It dug into the wall of the port and made some nicks and cuts, but it's nothing that a 120 grit sanding roll couldn't fix. This next step is something that can be done but I strongly do not recommend. When you remove the VTCS shafts, it leaves holes in the ports. I read that some people have done this and had no issues and that some had negative results. So as an experiment, I want to test the material out. My reasons for this test is because once the material cures, the packet states that it can be sanded and shaped much like body filler. But this is not something that you want in your intake manifold. I had no intention of leaving this material in the holes of this manifold, so I, later after I filmed this video, I took a hammer and a sharp chisel and removed the quick steel and left the holes open. I only kept the left and right outer parts of the manifold where the shaft came through the ends using some plastic and a two-part epoxy. As long as you have a new intake manifold gasket and it is torqued correctly and mounted properly, you should have zero issues with holes being left open. If you'd like to close these, have them welded shut and then reshape your ports and sand. To shape the quick steel, I started with a 120 grit sanding roll and slowly worked the excess material down to the same basic shape of the runner. I repeated the step across all four runners. Next I took the cordless drill with a 180 grit flex hone and put a final pass on the four runners. This helped to level any uneven areas as well as blend the quick steel and aluminum to the same texture. The last step is to reassemble the valves inside the plenum. When assembling the inner plenum valves of the VIX, take note of the mounting positions. 
Each valve has small press dots above the mounting holes to show they only go in one way on the shaft. Use maximum strength thread lock on the mounting screws when you tighten them. This will prevent them from backing out under operation. You wouldn't want these to come out and wind up in your engine. This is what they look like fully assembled and now the manifold is ready to install. Theoretically with this manifold mounted and the Mazda MP3 ECU, this should take the protege's power up from 130 horsepower to the 140-148 horsepower mark. If you'd like to get an MP3 computer, you can find them on eBay for decent prices. Here are the part numbers. As a step further, I wanted to put the Protege on a dyno and get baseline numbers before the installation to show whether or not this modification actually works. It should, given the fact that MP3 has the exact same engine, cams, catalyst, and the same size diameter exhaust. The only differences the MP3 had were some changes to the suspension shock absorbers, springs, muffler, and ECU. The ECU's fuel maps were somewhat the same, but the ignition maps were a bit more aggressive. So hopefully the baseline number should show this information.